rest of you have a treat, although you've already, you already know this as such. Um, we have a very special guest with us, uh, Superintendent Emeritus Bill Kreiderman. And I, I may have mentioned this before at some point when he's been here in the past, but um, you may or may not know this, but Bill has had an integral part of my life um, in, in many different ways. In fact, he, he taught my history and polity class in the Free Methodist Church. I think I passed. I did. Okay. Um, I did pass that class. That was some... Um, long time ago, <laughs> um, but you also married my parents, which, which, was, which means that he is really an integral part of me being here. Yeah, <laughs> so um, I'm very thankful you did that all those years ago, um, but we want to make sure that you guys, let's give uh, Superintendent Meredith Bill Kreiderman a warm welcome as he brings the word to us this morning. Thank you so much. I tell you, I am feeling so old today. Uh, and I feel so at home here. I'm a graduate of Hillsdale College, by the way. And I used to study. Well, you use that term loosely, maybe. But uh, I used to uh, look at some books while I was here. And I did it right in this building. I, uh, right off in that room there was sort of my office to study in, and the front pew uh, was a place where I would rest during the day when I got tired of studying. And I find that uh, that sort of created something in me because every time I go to church now, I want to lay down in a pew and take a nap. <laughs> and don't laugh, because some of you want to do the same thing. <laughs> you know, I looked in the paper this morning, or yesterday morning it was, and I counted uh, a list of 18 garage sales. That has to be like heaven on earth for my eldest son, Bill, because he's never seen a garage sale that he didn't like. <laughs> he goes to all of them and he all, usually buys something in every one. So if you ever see a, a guy that looks like a Kreiderman, uh, just jack the prices up a little and then, then you can play with it, you know, and bring it down a little bit and he'll buy every time. He just, it's so funny to listen to him. But this is garage sale season. And it's a time when we find all outdated, used stuff that you don't need anymore or don't want anymore, and you try to sell it. You might call it junk. In fact, that's exactly what I call it, junk, usually. But nevertheless, we get out our card tables and we cover the stuff in the garage that we don't want to sell, you know, put some sheets over to something, and then we take all the trouble to price everything, even though we know that come late Saturday afternoon, we'll be willing to pay somebody to take it off of our hands. Sometimes we even at our house put out the old coffee pot in hopes to entice customers with a free cup of coffee that tastes a little bit like aluminum uh, because we haven't used that pot for years. So we get out the lawn chairs, and we sit and wait and rush for potential customers. And after waiting quite a while, a couple of cars drive up, and that heightens our anticipation. And then we see it's a couple of our own kids. No profit here. But they look over the items and, interestingly, begin to make comments like, Mom, you can't be serious. We've had that Detroit uh, Tiger mug since 1968. It says World Series champions on it. We've had it so long. And mom says, yeah, we've had it so long. That's exactly why we're selling it. But you can't. And he told, holds it tenderly to his breast and takes it back into the house. Another kid speaks up. Hey, I watched Romper Room on that TV and you're going to try to sell it? And I say, but it's black and white and it has a 12-inch screen and all the people in the pictures are leaning over like this. <laughs> but you can get it fixed, they say, and that too goes back into the house. And on and on it goes, one by one, the items in our junk pile are looked at friendly and fondly, almost reverently, as special memories are awakened by common, ordinary stuff. When my folks passed away, we four brothers had the task of readying the house for a sale. And we discovered that 69 years of married life results in, it seemed like tons of stuff that had to be taken either to goodwill or given to family members or discarded some way. The process was similar to our garage sale. Reverently, we would hold a particular item 
old photo albums, Christmas decorations, dad's fish pole, mom's Bible. And memories would flood in, and there would be tears and laughter and silent moments as we remembered events and occasions awakened by these common, ordinary things, made precious by those who had touched them. Now this phenomenon is not new. It's called, it's, it's sacred to the mind. It's called in Latin, sacramentum. And we shorten it to say sacrament. Common, ordinary things made precious and significant because of memories. So scripture tells us over in Mark, the 14th chapter, these words. On the first day of the Feast of Unlimited, Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go make preparation for you to meet, eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples telling them, go into a city and a, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make red preparations for us there. The disciples left and went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them, and so they prepared the Passover. Now moving over to verse 22. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Common, ordinary things made precious by the touch of God. From this story, I want to fast forward now to about seven or eight weeks. Jesus had already been crucified. And then had come the resurrection, that central, epical event that was to forever change the world. He had met with his disciples. He would breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. He had ascended to heaven, and now he was gone. And now his followers were alone with their fears and failures, really sort of unsure as to what to do next. Jesus had told them to meet again in Jerusalem, so they went back into the suburbs and they found an upper room where they could meet and pray, and they found just the right place. Now, I, I wonder, if you'll let my imagination just run wild for just a few minutes here, do you think this upper room here could have been that same upper room where Jesus went? Now, we can't know for sure, but it is remotely possible, I guess, so anyway, in my imagination, I see Peter there with about 70 of them, and he takes them into the house, and they go up to the upper room, and they notice that it has a familiar look. Maybe the room had an unmistakable aura about it. The, the smell of stale bread and half-empty cups of wine seemed to suggest that somebody had had a Passover meal, and they'd eaten it there. The room untouched yet by the cleanup crew was a poignant reminder of that intimate gathering for someone. Then Peter, motioning for them to be seated and with a quiver in his voice, speaks. It's, it's been a terrible month, guys. Roman soldiers are still looking for us. Some of our number have been beaten and imprisoned, but now we're here just as Jesus expected us to be. I wish he were here too. I miss him so. Picking up a partial loaf of bread, he continues, Remember, guys, when he gave us this? We didn't believe that he'd be tortured someday. And remember he told us that this cup of wine represented his blood and that it would take away our sins once and for all, and we'd never again have to sacrifice a lamb? And then he was arrested, and we all ran for our lives. We let him down when he needed us the most. And I, Peter says, I denied that, I have ever know, that I'd ever known him. And then he was crucified. And sort of I think about then, Peter began to weep. Between the sobs, he said, do you suppose we can do it again? Might Jesus sort of let us start over here? 
Do you suppose we could make believe that Jesus is here with us? Here, take this bread. It represents his body. And here, finish this wine. It's Jesus' blood. He, he shed it to save the whole world. Maybe it might even save us. So two common, ordinary things. Things touched by Jesus became sacred to the mind. Sacramentum. A sacrament. And they remembered together. They remembered Jesus on the cross. They remembered their fa failures, their unfaithfulness, their sins, and they mourned their condition, and they mourned the loss of this one friend that might really understand them. And then suddenly, while they contemplated their past and while they prayed, it seemed as if a holy presence enveloped them. And the book of Acts tells us when that day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place in an upper room when suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And now they were no longer alone, you see. In fact, they would never be alone again. For the promise Jesus made to them before his death was this. It's for your good that I go away. Because unless I go away, the counselor, the comforter will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. You know him, for he lives with you now, and he will be in you then when I go to heaven. And he will help you remember everything that I have told you. He was saying, it will be as if I never left you. And so repeated over and over for over 2,000 years, that's exactly what happens. While the Lord's Supper is infinitely more than just a, a memory, it's Jesus giving grace to us by giving of himself. He says, this is my body. This is my blood. Still the presence of the risen Christ embodied in common, ordinary things. Bread and wine fairly shout to us remember remember I will never leave you or forsake you the truth is that Jesus goes with us everywhere we go he says that when you go back home this afternoon or when you go to work tomorrow or when you go to do something else or when you face temptations this week or when you weep over your frustrations and failures, he says, but I am with you. But on a more positive and maybe a more exciting note, he also commissions us with this assignment. Go into all the world and share the good news to everyone. And lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. And we might say, you know, you can't take it with you, though. And Jesus says, oh, wait a minute. The psalmist said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, but because even in death, I will be with you. So when you may think you're just ordinary garage variety stuff, worn out, broken, tired, of no apparent use, you will, at my touch, Jesus says, take on the glow of eternity. You see, God doesn't make junk. There's a resurrection for all of us. So Peter once again reminds us later on in his life, he says, now remember, you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a people belonging to God. Once you were not a people, but now you are people of God. Once you did not, had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And so this morning, we will take, partake of the ordinary, bread and wine. But it's been touched by the hand of God. I went to a garage sale here a couple of years ago. Over in Spring Arbor, they have that big missions garage sale, you know. And uh, I went over there because I was looking for something. I had lost an old coffee mug of mine. 
that was very precious to me, had some significance. And so I decided, I couldn't find it anywhere. I said, well, it might be some free Methodist stole it or something. No, I'm I just kidding. <laughs> But I went over there and thought maybe it would just have been, maybe I left it here and they put it in the lost and found. And so I went looking and I went all these tables with all sorts of sizes and shapes of, of cups. And I went and I thought to myself, I, I don't care how much they're going to ask for it. If I find it, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to redeem it if I find it. And someday I think I will. But you know, I believe that uh, God... wanders through the garages of the world looking for lost, chipped, broken humanity. And I think he looks to try to find someone, maybe from this congregation this morning. He says, I don't care how much it's going to cost because I already paid the most precious price I could ever pay. I'm going to buy it back. I'm going to redeem that person because he's of such great value to me. And so we who are ordinary become new creations of God, resurrected all over again, maybe even for the very first time. There might be somebody here this morning who just needs to pray this prayer. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm messed up. But I begin to see now how much you love me. And I want to right now, God, just say to you, please forgive me of my sins. And please come into my life. Make me a brand new person. Make me a person of worth. Help me to realize that. And he will. Let's step out of the garage sales of life, all of us. And step into the glory of God's presence and power back into the security of his wonderful presence. Let's leave this place today remembering those things sacred to the mind, sacramentum, as we partake of this sacrament. So, you who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and peace with your neighbors and who intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and humbly bowing, make your honest confession to Almighty God. Amen.